Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. In today's video we're going to be going through resisted tests of the ankle joint. The purpose of doing resisted tests is to see if the muscles affecting the joint are either weak or painful. So as to not slow your video down we're not going to be comparing the affected and unaffected sides but of course in practice we always want you to compare the two to inform your patient diagnosis. So when we're doing resisted tests we want to think about two things power that's scored on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5 and pain. Right, let's get to our main video, let's get clinical. So now we're going to do resisted movements of the foot and ankle joint. The patient position for all of these can either be done in long sitting or lying and the therapist position for these are all going to be done at the end of the plinth or bed which you're working from. Before we start, you will see in classic texts um, many different handhold positions whilst doing resisted movements. If it's at all possible, I would much prefer, as long as the joint and the movement is stable, that you keep your hands as much off the structures as possible. Because, for instance, if you are compressing the malleoli or pressing into soft tissue structures, you may find that you get a different altered muscle response, which is actually not true. So with that in mind, we're going to look at resisted ankle plantar flexion. So we ask the patient to fully dorsiflex, so pull their toes up towards them as far as they can. You can even use an open hand, but so as to not cover your view for the video, you could also use a fist and you simply give the command of push me away, hard as you can. We then note whether it was painful or non-painful and score it on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5. The muscles that are primarily used in this are the triceps psori group, which is a complicated way of saying the calf. So we're looking at the gastroc, the soleus, and a tiny bit from plantaris. The other things that are going to also be involved in ankle plantar flexion are the perineae group and the flexor tendon group. If you want to, you could also put the knee into 90 degrees flexion and repeat your plantar flexion test to get more of a soleus bias. Although this is not commonly done in practice because the soleus muscle tends to work quite well in itself anyway and there's abnormalities in it are not that common. Moving on, we're going to look at ankle dorsiflexion as a resisted test. So we ask the patient to pull the toes up and the ankle up towards them as best they can. Watch out that they keep their knee in full extension. They will want to bend it and use their hip flexors to cheat and this will give you a negative result. So with the knee fully extended and the toes pulled up, we're just going to put one hand around the dorsum and pull down and say, don't let me pull you down. And again, we assess and ask whether there was pain present or not. And we note the score on the Oxford scale between naught and five. And the muscles primarily used for this action from the extensor compartment Next, we're going to move into ankle inversion. Patients don't really understand in an inversion and why should they? So the best thing to do is to actually set the foot up in position for them. So passively bring their foot in and ask them to hold that position. That allows you to then just put one hand round. We're gonna give some minimal support so that the leg doesn't roll into internal external rotation at the hip. And we're gonna to say to the patient, don't let me move you. And again, we're going to perform the resisted test there, noting whether it's painful or non-painful and scoring it on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5, with the chief muscles being the tibialis anterior and the tibialis posterior for inversion. Lastly, we're going to look at ankle eversion. And again, our patient doesn't understand eversion a lot of the time, so we're going to bring it into that position for them. Um, something else to note in this position, uh, just as sort of bonus material, is whether they do it in a very dorsiflex position or very plantar flex position. If you can, just guide them into more of a neutral position. You'll find that this puts more of a longus bias and it's going to be a lot weaker, and this one up here tends to be a lot stronger. So to not complicate our lives, we're going to put it into a mid position. We ask the patient to hold that mid position. We gently support on the inside, and we say to the patient, don't let me move you and we apply our resisted test like so. The chief muscles involved for this are the perineal group, 
which are strong everters. And we're going to note whether it was painful or non-painful and score it on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5. And that concludes our video on resisted tests for the foot and ankle joint. So here are the key points to summarize this video on resisted movements of the ankle joint. When testing resisted movement of the ankle, make sure you compare both the affected and unaffected sides, testing resisted ankle plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, inversion, and eversion. Be aware of the muscles that are involved in each resisted test. And as you test for resisted movements, look for two key elements, pain and power, which is measured between naught and five on the Oxford scale. And that concludes our video on resisted tests of the ankle complex. From here, we'd recommend you check out our other videos, such as active range of motion ankle testing and passive range of motion testing at the ankle. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon in clinical physio.